Hi, in this video, we're gonna learn almost everything there is to know about tanking with Paladin in Final Fantasy XIV. This is my ultimate Paladin job guide that will last us until Dawn Trail, and when that expansion comes out, I'll just make a new guide. We are almost at 20,000 subs, which is insane to think about. So if you wanna join the Bun Boss family, AKA only buns, then make sure to limit break three that subscribe button down below. My name is Bun Boss, and this is my ultimate Paladin job guide. This will be in the perspective of a completely new Paladin player and will be very thorough, so there will be timestamps below for you. Now the two most important things about tanking is always check your tank stance. This can turn off between dungeon queuing and can cause a lot of problems. Do your class and job quests as they come up. These unlock abilities and upgrade your gladiator to Paladin at level 30 via job stone which you must equip yourself. If you are playing on controller, then this will also update your cross hotbar, which is annoying, but I have controller guides here for Paladin specifically linked in the description box. These next topics are basically the holy grails of tanking. Change your gear frequently. As you level, you want to keep up at the highest item level wherever possible. This will increase your personal damage and lower the damage you received. You would be shocked what one low item level piece could do to your damage. Hit every enemy. If you're a new tank, it can be overwhelming, but as long as you hit every enemy with an AoE ability and your tank sense is on, you'll be doing better than 50% of tanks in Duty Finder. Use your tank cooldowns when you're actually getting hit. If you start your pull and run and then blow all your tank cooldowns as you're running, you can lose precious mitigation. Right when you're about to stop, use one or two mitigations max. Have at least one mitigation happening per pool as you level and gain access to more. Two should really be the sweet spot because you also have to realize that healers get more abilities to help you. More than two can be overkill as mitigation is multiplicative, meaning as you stack more, they become less effective. And with Paladin, you'll have plenty of mitigations to choose from. I will be giving major rotations for each turning point of the job. The reoccurring question I do get from the very beginning is what is an opener? This is a specific rotation of abilities, usually at max level, to make sure all your abilities come off cooldown under the buff window in some relative form to the job. These aren't as important for leveling, so put those aside until max level. I will only mention combo potencies, and I'll be giving insight and nuance to certain skills to give you a deeper understanding. Also, check the comments since a lot of the other players can give really helpful insights and nuance as well. Level 1, Fast Blade. Delivers an attack with a potency of 200, your first single target GCD in your 3 GCD combo. Level 2, Fight or Flight. Increases damage dealt by 25%, your first OGCD or off global cooldown that you should use every time it comes off cooldown. This ability is referred to as your buff window way in the future. We want all of our high potency damages within this window to maximize our damage. Level 4, Riot Blade, delivers an attack with potency of 300, your second single target GCD in your 3 GCD combo. Level 6, Total Eclipse, delivers attack potency of 100 to all nearby enemies, your first AoE GCD or global cooldown. Optimally, you'll use this on 3 plus enemies, but if you're new, I recommend using it on 2 or more enemies to keep aggro, until you feel comfortable hitting 2 different enemies with single target. Level 8, Roll Action Rampart. Reduces damage taken by 20%. You will use this on dungeon pulls right when you're about to stop. You can also use this during boss fights when you visually see the boss charging for an attack or progress bar. Level 10, Shield Bash. Delivers attack potency of 100. Additionally, stuns an enemy for 6 seconds. This seems good on paper, but the problem with this ability is it resets your GCD timer, so you would have to use Shield Bash instead of fast blade or riot blade plus we have an ogcd coming up that does the same thing where you can weave in between your gcd so i don't even have this on my cross hopper level 10 iron will and release iron will this is your tank stance this must be turned on at almost all times on duty finder content for dungeons trials etc this is what generates aggro without this on nine times out of ten you will not generate enough aggro to keep enemies targeting you which then they'll start killing your whole party and everyone dies 
Level 12, Roll Action, Low Blow. Stuns Target. This is a very underrated ability at lower levels. I love weaving this between my GCD combo in order to stun enemies and lower my damage taken, which can make a tiny difference in taking pressure off your healer, especially if they are new as well. Level 15 class quest ability, Shield Lob. Delivers ranged attack with a potency of 100. Increases enmity. Now this can be really confusing and I see this a lot in dungeons. Your tank stance on generates aggro, so no matter what ability you use, it will generate aggro. Shield lob also generates aggro, but this does not replace your tank stance. I have seen many new players spam this, but as long as you have your tank stance on and you're using your GCD single or AoEs on enemy, you'll be fine. This ability is more to pull enemies that are far away from you, so you don't have to run around the map hitting them within melee range. Level 15 roll action, provoke, increases enmity. This is basically the same thing as shield lob, except it's an OGCD and can be weaved in between your GCDs. This can be used in the same way grabbing enemies far away from you without having to run over to them. Prioritize this over shield lob. Level 15 dungeon and trial rotation for paladin. We can craft our first single target in AOE rotation, although it be small. A basic single target rotation, fight or flight on cooldown, Fast Blade, Riot Blade, Repeat. A basic AoE rotation, Fight or Flight on cooldown, Total Eclipse Spam. This will be your rotation essentially up to level 50 with a few additions along the way between now and then. Be reminded that you will not have the correct skill speed and can throw off cooldowns and timing, so don't fret if things don't line up perfectly every time. Until you're level 90, it can actually do the full rotations with abilities, just work on general flow. Level 18 Roll Action, Interject. Interrupts a target's action. Actions that can be interrupted can be recognized by the progress bar of the enemy when it's slightly red and pulsing. They have recently redone a lot of boss fights and a lot more actions are interruptible or you can stun to interrupt. If you have adjusted your UI and the progress bar of the boss, these are pretty easy to catch. Level 22 Roll Action Reprisal Reduces damage dealt by nearby enemies by 10%. Another OGCD mitigation for all tanks. Can be used in tandem with Rampart, but at lower levels, it's good to split these mitigations between multiple pools. Better to have one mitigation per pool rather than two for one and zero for the next. Level 26, Rage of Halone. Delivers an attack with a potency of 330. This is your third single target GCD in your three GCD combo. So it will be Fast Blade, Riot Blade, and Rage of Halone. At level 30, complete the job quest and equip the job stone to become a paladin. Congratulations. Your job's specific ability is Oath Gauge. You generate Oath Gauge by landing auto attacks, so it's important that Paladin is always in range of an enemy in order to generate Oath Gauge to use on future job abilities. Level 30 job quest ability, Spirits Within, delivers an attack potency of 270. This is an OGCD damage ability, which means it can be weaved in between your three GCD combo. Use this on cooldown and it should land every other time in your fight or flight buff window. Level 32 roll action, Arms Length, creates a barrier of nullifying most knockbacks and draw in effects. Additionally, gives slow debuffs to an enemy when they hit the barrier. Another very underrated ability for tanks. This should be used as mitigation as it debuffs the attack time of enemies, which means less damage when pulling. This can be paired with Rampart or Reprisal. Most beginner tanks and even veteran tanks do not use arms lengths as a mitigation, but it is really good. Level 35 job quest ability, Sheltron. Reduces damage taken by 15%. Oath Gauge cost 50. Your first and dare I say most important job specific ability. You will be using this all the way up to end game. A damage mitigation OGCD paired with other mitigations. This will upgrade again down the road and become one of your best tanking abilities. Level 30 Sentinel reduces damage taken by 30%. A tank OGCD mitigation ability and a really powerful one. Level 40 Job Quest ability Prominence delivers 170 attack potency to all nearby enemies. This is your combo action to your earlier ability of Total Eclipse. Level 45 Job Quest Ability Cover. Take all damage intended for another party member as long as said party member remains within 10 yams. Oath Gauge Cost 50. 
This is a more niche ability that can be used to save a party member if you are quick enough or save a fellow tank in trial content if they're going to die due to low health. You won't use this nearly as much as Sheltron. Level 50 Circle of Scorn delivers an attack potency of 120 to all enemies. Additional effect is damage over time, aka a dot. With this ability, we can start seeing some minor foundation come together for Paladin. If you notice, Circle of Scorn and Spirits Within are on the same cooldown of 30 seconds. If you are grasping Paladin and you have good ping for the game, you will want to double weave these in between your GCD combo. This will make sure they always come off cooldown at the same time. Don't worry if you can't double weave these, that is a more advanced ability. If not, then you can do one GCD, Spirits Within, one GCD, Circle of Scorn. This is called keeping up time and abilities with same cooldowns are generally used together. Level 50 job quest ability, Hollowed Ground. This is your invulnerability and all tanks have one. Though Paladin is deemed the best out of all of them as it's just a straight invuln with no drawbacks. This doesn't protect you from certain boss mechanics in extremes or savage content, but in casual MSQ quests, dungeons and trials, this should work without issue. Some even use this as just regular tank mitigation. We can craft a pretty easy opener slash rotation for level 50 content since you'll be here for a minute in MSQ and leveling, but it won't be much different, but I'll give you a general opener for structure. This is the level 50 dungeon and trial rotation for Paladin. Single target, Fast Blade, Fight or Flight, Riot Blade, Spirits Within, Rage of Halone, Circle of Scorn. If you can double weave those abilities, Spirits Within and Circle of Scorn, do so. If not, this will be just fine. AoE target rotation, Total Eclipse, Fight or Flight, Prominence, Circle of Scorn, Total Eclipse, Spirits Within, Prominent. Of course, Circle and Scorn and Spirits Within are interchangeable at this point. Level 52, Bulwark. Another Paladin specific mitigation. You just put this in your rotation of defensive mitts. Level 54, Job Quest ability, Goring Blade. Delivers an attack potency of 700. If you notice, this ability has a 60 second cooldown, the same as our buff window, Fight or Flight. This means in theory, this should always fall into your fight or flight window so you can have these cooldowns drop off at the same time. Goring Blade should always be used in your buff window which will make the 700 potency skill 875 without any other buffs from your teammates. Level 56 job quest ability, Divine Veil. Creates a barrier for you and your party to the equivalent of 10% of your HP. This is a very underrated ability and I don't feel get used often or prioritized enough to help out your healer for big wade ride damage or party wide damage. It is based off your HP which tanks have the highest HP so it's a pretty beefy shield for basically free. At level 58 you unlock the trait chivalry which now riot blade and spirits within generate MP. This is important for your future combos that cost MP. Level 58 job quest ability, Clemency, restores target HP with 1000 potency. Additional effect, restores self 50% of HP restored for the target. This is a more controversial ability and this is my opinion on it. If you are a tank, you should not be healing. Using this ability takes away from you doing damage or generating aggro. This ability is great for oh shit situations or if the healer dies, but I personally never really have to touch this ability if the healer is still alive. As you get later in the game, highly skilled healers will wait pretty long before healing up the party if waiting for cooldowns or to maximize their heals. Sprout healers also do the same, but just because they haven't hit their heal button quick enough. The hard part is determining who you have in your party. I always give the benefit of the doubt until proven otherwise. So until I die once, I won't use clemency. Level 60 job quest ability, Royal Authority. Delivers an attack potency of 400. This ability is just an upgrade for the Rage of Halone. So now you have your 3 GCD combo, Fast Blade, Riot Blade, Royal Authority. Level 62, Intervention. Reduces target party members damage by 10% increases another 10% if you have Rampart or Sentinel active. 
The only time I use this ability that I can think of off the top of my head is in trials. If there's going to be a tank buster or a healer, if a room wide is coming and they may die. Great ability for party members, but you'll still be using Sheltron most of the time for Oath Gauge. Level 64, Holy Spirit. Deals unexpected damage with a potency of 350, Divine Might potency is 450, and Resquiescat potency of 650. Restores own HP by 400 potency. At level 64, you also unlock the Divine Magic Mastery trait, which halves MP costs for all spells while preventing casting interruptions via damage taken. Grants the following effects after successfully completing a combo with Royal Authority. In a nutshell, when you do your 1-2-3 combo and end with Royal Authority, your Holy Spirit will get a bonus damage increase. So from that, you can see why using Holy Spirit after Royal Authority is going to give you a boost in damage. The great thing is you will kind of visually be able to see this when Holy Spirit gets a yellow border around it, which is telling you that you have the combo bonus. Level 68 ability, Requiescat, deals unexpected damage with a potency of 300, grants 4 stacks of Requiescat, which gives damage potency increases to Holy Spirit. There is a pretty long timer here to use these stacks, so you will have some leeway with these before being under your buff window of fight or flight. Here is a major rotation change for level 68 Paladin, and this is getting pretty close to our level 90 Paladin rotation, so this is a great one to really focus on doing correctly. Level 68 Single Target Rotation, Fast Blade, Riot Blade, Royal Authority, Double Weave, Fight or Flight, and Requiescat, Goring Blade, Double Weave, Circle of Scorn, Spirits Within, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. We double weave similar cooldowns so they always come off cooldown together. Now sometimes this is not optimal for some players if ping is bad. Tank is the easiest as it usually has a 2.5 GCD cooldown, which gives you plenty of time to double weave. I would start practicing double weaving here as it's prevalent in some other jobs as well. You can just delay one OGCD if you're not able to double weave, but it will move the timers around and can misalign somewhat. But it's honestly not going to be an issue. The fact that you're even thinking about this or watching this video is already going to put you way above other tanks who don't do any of this. The AoE rotation will change at level 72, so still use the level 50 AoE rotation with just the added Requiescat. Level 70 Job Quest Ability Passage of Arms essentially is a channeled defensive mitigation. This is really only useful when you're unable to target the boss and do damage, and it's going to cast a room-wide attack. You can use this to help mitigate for your healers. Either way, it is pretty to look at. BT dubs channeled mitigation just means that you have to stay still in order to use it and once you move it will stop the ability. There are a few other jobs that have this type of ability as well. Level 72 Holy Circle deals unexpected damage with a potency of 100, divine might potency 200 or resquiescat potency of 300. This will also restore HP by 400 potency. Same ability as Holy Spirit, just an AoE version. You don't really have to worry about the HP being restored. This is just a built-in HP recovery system for Paladin. Completely passive and nothing you have to worry about. Just think of it as extra healing for yourself. At 72, you will also unlock the trait Enhanced Prominence, which gives you the Divine Might buff when using your AoEs. And now the Divine Might buff will also apply to Holy Spirit. So basically, this is just aligning your single target and AoE rotation to have the same type of effect. Your new level 72 AoE rotation for Paladin is as follows. Total Eclipse, Double Weave, Fight or Flight, and Requiescat. Prominence, Double Weave, Circle of Scorn, and Spirits Within. Goring Blade, Four Holy Circles. After that, your regular GCD combo is just Total Eclipse, Prominence, Holy Circle until your 30 second cooldowns come off and your buff window comes up again. I think some new players will get confused here. Even though we have some single target abilities here, under the buff windows and with your teammates buff, they do come out as more damage than just spamming your two AoE GCDs. Level 74, Intervene. Paladin's Gap Closer. This will make its way into your rotation, ah, uh, you guessed it, under your buff window as it is damaged still. 
You can also just use it as a gap closer for getting to enemies quicker. Level 76 Atonement delivers an attack potency of 400 and restores MP. Can only be executed under the Sword Oath buff, which you get by completing a Royal Authority combo. Here is a turning point for Paladin's understanding. There is a bit of a priority filler system as your Royal Authority now gives you two different buffs. One for Holy Circle at 450 potency and one for Atonement at 400 potency, each lasting 30 seconds. The main takeaway here is that you want to spend all of your buff damage before you go back into a combo. If you have Atonements left, use those. If you have any buffs for Holy Spirit, use that. Level 80 ability Confidier deals 900 potency to the first enemy and 50% less to the rest. This is going to be our second to last rotation change before level 90. Our level 80 Paladin single target rotation will be Fast Blade, Riot Blade, Royal Authority, Double Weave, Fight or Flight, and Requiescat, Goring Blade, Double Weave, Circle of Scorn, and Spirits Within, Confidier, Holy Spirit three times, then Atonement. Those Holy Spirits are taking place of our level 90 rotation. Our level 80 Paladin AoE rotation would be Total Eclipse, Double Weave, Fight or Flight, and Requiescat, Prominence, Double Weave, Circle of Scorn, and Spirits Within, Goring Blade, Confidier, Holy Circle three times. By now, you can probably start seeing the similarities between the single target and the AoE rotation for Paladin. Level 82, Holy Sheltron. This is an upgrade to Sheltron and is now even more useful than it was before and will be a major player in Paladin mitigation. Just use per usual in the same type of situations. At level 84, you'll get a trait that adds a healing effect to Holy Spirit, Holy Circle, and Confidier. This essentially just ups your survivability during your rotation. Level 86, Expansion, an upgrade to Spirits Within and now is an AoE instead of just a single target. You will still use as intended, it's just stronger now and hits multiple people. Level 90, Blades Combo, Blade of Truth, Faith, and Valor. The best part about Paladin Rotation in my personal opinion, these three abilities are not able to be put on the cross hotbar or hotbar. They just replace Confidier when activated. So instead of the three holy spirits or holy circles in your rotation, it's now just the blades combo. Now we can move over to the balance discord for our level 90 rotation. This should make sense now that you've crafted a rotation every chunk of levels and now understand how we got here. Your level 90 paladin single target rotation is as follows. Fast blade, riot blade, royal authority, double weave, fight or flight, and requiescat. Goring Blade, Circle of Scorn, Expansion, Double Weaved, Confidier, Weave Intervene, Blade of Faith, Weave Intervene, Blade of Truth, Blade of Valor, Holy Spirit, Atonement, Atonement, Atonement. That is your official level 90 Paladin rotation until our new expansion. If you noticed in the earlier rotations, I did not include intervene. If you're going to drop anything from this, I would just drop intervene. If you don't feel like it, it's just extra damage. Your level 90 Paladin AOE rotation is as follows. Total Eclipse, Double Weave, Fight or Flight, Requiescat, Prominence, Double Weave, Circle of Scorn and Expansion, Goring Blade, Confidier, Blade of Faith, Blade of Truth, Blade of Valor, Holy Circle spam. With this, congratulations, you've completely learned Paladin 1 through 90. Let's quickly go over some defensive mitigation plans. As Paladin, you have quite a few through your job abilities. I think a lot of players overcomplicate this section. Essentially, as long as you have one or two running on every big pull, you will have minimal issues. The issue only comes in when you have no mitigations going and have 12 enemies attacking you at once. You can do a few combinations and some are more optimal than others, but you can dive into that later and as you get more comfortable tanking. At lower levels, you can move between Sheltron and then Rampart, then Sentinel. But by the near third one, enemies should probably be dead already. At higher levels, you can start pairing things like Sheltron and Sentinel, Rampart and Reprisal together, but realize they have diminishing return. So the more you use above two, the way less effective they become. So two would be the sweet spot for dungeon pools. Trials, I don't feel like you need more than one during tank busters or mechanics at any level, as long as you have one thing up during the heavy hitters. 
ultimately just focus on the cooldowns and what they are and you'll have a better sense of when you can use something. For example, you're going to use Sheltron far more often than Rampart or you're going to use Reprisal more than Rampart as well since it's 60 seconds instead of 90 seconds. Understanding the cooldown timers I think is far more important in this defensive mitigation section than the actual ability itself. Now I am human and I could have missed stuff so if there's anything that was crucial that I missed please leave a comment down below so then other people can read those. I want to give a huge thank you to my Bun supporters for Patreon, YouTube, and Discord. Your monetary monthly donation helps make these videos possible. Now I have all sorts of job guides, controller guides, and all sorts of Final Fantasy guides on my channel. So if you want to watch more of those videos, you can find those in the description box or you can click here.